Sony finally listened and released an update to both the FX3 and 30 cameras and it brings with it a lot of updates that have been long overdue. What that is, why you should actually update your camera and you always should update your camera and how to do it will be revealed right after the intro. Here we go, Sony finally listened and made the smallest cinema camera in its lineup finally really the most flexible cinema camera for its price point in their lineup. They released the update which is version 2.0 that brings with it a host of new features for the camera. All you have to do is actually go onto Sony's website, download the firmware update called 2.0 which there is of course a link to in the description below and if you haven't actually downloaded the prior version you also need to download and update your camera beforehand to version 1.05. Yeah, I hadn't done that as well, I was still on version 1.0. Without the 1.05 you get an error message when updating to 2.0, so update to 1.05, then 2.0. All you got to do is drop the downloaded file to your SD card and then insert it into your camera, go to the setup menu of your camera and, and then to versions. In my opinion there are two things you need to do before updating. Make sure your camera battery is actually almost fully charged or fully charged and second, and this is more of an opinion than a rule, don't use an SD card that is full of super important video files you haven't backed up yet. There's always a chance that something goes wrong. So back up your files before making updates. When finished, let's get over all the newly added features in your super tiny cinema camera. First, 4K DCI. Fuck yeah, finally. This is a digital cinema 4K resolution. This uses a bit more real estate of the sensor and gives you the option to actually crop and scale a tad more when working within a regular 4K timeline. I loved it on the BMPC 4K. I also love it on the Sony FX30. Also, very good for US shooters is the true 24 FPS, which until now was only available in 23.98. These weird, the weird mid thingy that is there. This is particularly effective when shooting with multiple cameras at once and syncing them up in post with the same or different frame rates was always a hassle, especially in terms of audio. Now there's also the availability of real matching shutter speeds. For 24 frames per second it's 1 over 48, which finally matches the 180 degree shutter rule for American shooters. And if you're into off-speed frame rates or if you really like the Hobbit movies in cinema, uh, you can now also shoot in 48 frames per second slow motion via SNQ mode and you need to double your shutter speed to 96 which is now also available. Great. Speaking of shutter speeds, what I'm still missing from these cameras and right now I'm doubting we are ever going to get this is the option to use shutter angle instead of shutter speed. This would eliminate a potential error in forgetting to set your shutter speed to the correct value since it's always on the right angle in this case if you actually drop it to 180 the 180 degree rule. Next up is the addition of de-squeeze modes into the camera itself, so anamorphic de-squeeze in that case, which gives you the option to see a regular image from your anamorphic lenses on your monitor. You can either use the de-squeeze for 1.3x or 2x, which gives you a wide range of lenses to actually play with. Since I don't have any anamorphics here right now, I'm not able to show you any footage of it, but there's quite a lot of it out there. But remember, you still have to de-squeeze the footage in post anyways. This is only for viewing it inside of your camera. The footage recorded will still have to be post-processed anyways. Also, when using the de-squeeze mode, you lose a couple of modes while using the de-squeeze on the FX3 or 30. Namely, the in-body image stabilization option is actually gone. So micro jitters need to be removed in post as well when using it handheld. Also, the option to shoot anything else than lock mode is gone. Effectively, acinetone isn't available. But since I only shoot in S-Log anyways, there isn't a big change for me anyways. Overall, this is a welcome update to the Sony FX30 and in my opinion makes this an even more viable budget option for upcoming filmmakers and users that are already in the Sony ecosystem, such as FX6 or 9 users. The FX30 is now much more viable to them. Being able to match both camera systems even easier to one another without much hassle brings more potential clients into and even better workflow in the end. Having a multiple camera setup with different Sony cameras has now become even more viable to actually own as a small business and makes it a great alternative to other manufacturers without spending too much money. And let's be honest, the FX30 is in my opinion still the best budget cinema camera there is and with this update it got even better in the end. Thank you very much for watching, my name is Leech and I'm off writing next scripts. If you haven't actually subscribed to this channel, there are plenty more of this type of content and many other things available for you to watch in the end, so subscribe. Have a nice day, see you around and goodbye.